pleasure to welcome you as we celebrate our Apprentice School's 104th graduating class. I'd like to take a moment to introduce the Newport News Shipbuilding leaders sharing the stage with me today. I'm joined by our company president, Jennifer Boykin, Dr. Letitia McCain, our director of education at Newport News Shipbuilding's Apprentice School. And since 1919, the Apprentice School has produced scores of shipyard leaders, including three that are on stage with me this morning. David Horn is our vice president of trades and Apprentice School graduate, class of 1989. Thomasina Wright is a vice president of fleet support and class of 1986 apprentice school graduate. And Damon Satry, vice president of integrated planning and production control, class of 1997. I'm also pleased to welcome state and local leaders, including members of our General Assembly and Newport News Vice Mayor, Curtis Bethany. Shipbuilding is all about teamwork. So I'm honored to have some, uh, some of them with us here tonight. The Honorable Bobby Scott, U.S. Con US Congressman and Representative of the 3rd Congressional District of Virginia. Commander Christopher DeGaulle, a Supervisor of Shipbuilding, Newport News. Representatives from our school systems, colleges, and universities. And I'm extremely happy that Donnie Dorsey, Vice President of Operations of our sister shipyard, has traveled here from Ingle Shipbuilding to be with us today, as well as Dr. Anna Bourdais, Ingle's Director of Apprentice Programs. You may also recognize several Newport News Shipbuilding leaders in the audience who are here to celebrate the achievements of their fellow shipbuilders. Thank you all for being here. I'd also like to remember two Apprentice School champions who are no longer with us. Last year, we lost Dr. Jim Hughes and Mr. James P. Healy. Dr. Hughes served as the school's manager of academics, and Mr. Healy was a machinist, craft instructor, and alumni emeritus. The school's faculty and staff, as well as leaders beside me, are wearing pins today in their honor. We miss them dearly, and we know their legacy will live on in these graduates. In a moment, we will begin the processional. But first, I want to remind us of why we're here today, for this special reason, to celebrate this year's graduating class. This means that this is not like a normal graduation you may go to. Here, we want you to feel free to cheer, to applaud, and to make some noise, because this is a joyous day, and we're excited to be here to celebrate our graduating class. Right? All right, the, the professional of graduates will be led by this year's Frank F. Satchel Jr. Outstanding Faculty Award recipient, Jessica Walker. <laughs> That's right, go Jessica. Once the gradu graduates are in place, the national anthem will be performed by William Davis IV, a member of the graduating class. It's okay to give it up. Then Jamika Jones. <laughs> J Jamika doesn't have any fans in here today, huh? <laughs> but Jamika Jones, known by her fellow shipbuilders at JJ, will join us on stage to deliver the invocation. Jamika is a member of the graduating class and this year's recipient of the James P. Healy Community Service Award. Now. <laughs> Now I invite everyone to please stand for the processional and remain standing for the national anthem.
Good morning. Thank you, William, for playing so lovely this morning. I would like to extend the, the welcome to the faculty, the family, the friends, and most importantly, the class of 2023. Let, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are gathered here today to celebrate the class of 2023. Let this room be filled with energy and love as we give recognition. I wanna give thanks to each graduate's dedication and commitment to their craftsmanship, scholarship, and leadership. Only we know the challenges we faced and the uncertainties that we felt. Yet we remained resilient and kept our faith throughout this journey. Lord, please provide guidance as we commence on our new journey and help us to see opportunities where there are obstacles, create solutions where there are problems, and continue to make a positive impact within our company. God, thank you for the faculty and staff who have mentored and taught us how to be successful. We also want to express our love and gratitude to our family and friends who have supported and encouraged us along the way. Heavenly Father, as we begin a new chapter in our book of completed successes, let us remember our job here is far from complete. I pray that we always remember we are a part of something much bigger than ourselves. As proud graduates of the Apprentice School and devoted employees to Newport News Shipbuilding, we must continue to be a cohesive team in order to carry out the legacy of always good ships. Thank you. Amen. Everyone, please be seated. Thank you, William and JJ, for starting our ceremony off with the pomp and circumstance it deserves. Shipbuilders are truly special and talented people. I'd also like to thank Liberty Live Church for allowing us to host today's ceremony in their beautiful facility. We are here today as family, friends, mentors, and cheerleaders of the graduating class, united in our pride for these shipbuilders who dedicate themselves to a noble mission. Graduates, I'd like to congratulate you on your achievement. What you have accomplished is truly remarkable. As I'm sure you will agree, the apprentice school is not for the faint of heart. To be here, each of you clocked in thousands of hours in the classroom and on the job training. You honed your skills and learned new concepts to become experts in your fields. And most importantly, you dedicated your hearts and your hands to building the best ships for the U.S. Navy. The Apprentice School prides itself on three pillars, craftsmanship, scholarship, and leadership. Throughout your apprenticeship, each of you strengthened these traits so that today you stand before us ready to become our next generation of shipbuilding leaders. As you may know, I began my career here at the shipyard on the waterfront. When I walked through those gates on my first day as a pipe fitter, I didn't know what the future would hold for me. But the experience I gained working with my tools helped me understand how our shipyard works and just how important our shipbuilders are. Our people are the foundation that enables us to deliver high quality ships. You may say, but what about our massive facilities, our new technologies? Yes, the shipyard has an incredible infrastructure and we're using cutting edge tools like digital work instructions, artificial intelligence, and additive manufacturing. But it is our people, it is our people who make our tools, who help take these tools and harness them to do the impossible. Think about it. Our aircraft carriers are 100,000 tons of steel, yet they float. Our submarines can stay submerged, undetectable for months at a time. And both of these products rely on nuclear power. Building and maintaining ships this complex requires discipline, precision, and a commitment to excellence. It requires innovation and the courage to try new ideas. And from you, it requires vision. Your time at the Apprentice School has prepared you to make connections to better understand our business. So no matter where your career takes you, you will be an informed decision maker and a strong leader. Newport News shipbuilding is busier than it's been in decades, and the Navy needs our ships now more than ever. So lean, lead us into the future and help us continue our legacy of always good ships. 
Thank you. Now, I'd like to take a few moments to recognize graduates who are proven standouts in their careers. Each year, the Apprentice School awards graduates who go above and beyond in academics, craftsmanship, volunteering, and more. So we prepared a special video to celebrate these honorees. So let's roll the video. The Apprentice School Class of 2023 Graduate and Faculty Awards. The Niels Christiansen Craftsmanship Award. Presented to graduates who excelled in craftsmanship among waterfront trades, this year's recipients are Joshua Anthony Callis, Travis Paul Knowlton, Con Dane Wynn, Roger Lewis Ovid Jr. and Adam Ryan West. The Charles F. Bailey Award, presented to graduates who attain the highest scholastic average in required courses. This year's recipients are Jason Benjamin Bailey, James Michael Beasley, Sean Michael Bresnan, Min Sung Ju, Daniel Joseph Murray, Nicholas Tyler Pasquin, James Logan Razor, Scott Jared Sinowitz, and Mark Reed Stoner. The W.R. Phillips Jr. Award presented to graduates from the advanced salaried programs who excelled in craftsmanship and job performance. This year's recipients are Jason Benjamin Bailey, Olivia Marie Catron, and Joseph Pasquale Imperiale. The G. Guy Via Award presented to graduates who attained the highest scholastic average in each of the optional advanced academic programs, leading to degrees in engineering, engineering technology, and business administration. This year's recipients are Olivia Marie Catron, Corey Southers Chambliss, Stephen Christian Jensen, Min Sung Ju, Jason Dalton Mintz, Gunther Volz Perkins, and Mark Reed Stoner. The Gold Athletic Award, presented to graduates who lettered each year of their apprenticeship in the same sport or activity while demonstrating leadership in the classroom. This year's recipients are Quanisha Tatiana Bruce, Alec Jordan Dutel, Avon Dumonte Hawkins, Jamika Cherie Jones, Dylan Wayne Messick, Logan David Mize, Jeremiah Keith Morgan, David Clay O'Brien, Thomas Michael Packard, Chandler Javon Perry, Lawrence Sylvester Reed Jr., Braxton Hayden Wallace, and Tyler Camden Weingrad. The James P. Healy Community Service Award, presented to the graduate who most exemplified leadership in community service, this year's recipient is Jamika Cherie Jones. The Frank F. Satchel Jr. Outstanding Faculty Award. Presented to a faculty member nominated by the graduating class who demonstrates the highest level of instructional quality and concern for apprentices' success and for overall contributions and support of the school. 
This year's recipient is Jessica Renee Walker. The Homer L. Ferguson Award, presented on behalf of the Apprentice Alumni Association to the graduate who achieved the highest average in combined required academic and craft grades. This year's recipient is Scott Jared Sinowitz. Congratulations to the Apprentice School Class of 2023 Graduate and Faculty Award recipients. Congratulations to all award winners. Let's give them another round of applause. I'd also like to give an extra shout out to graduate Alvin Hawkins and our apprentice school men's basketball team for bringing home the small college national, let me say that again, small college national championship. I'm now pleased to welcome our president. Her presence here de today demonstrates just how important you are and how special this ceremony is. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jennifer Boykin. Good morning, and let me just start by saying congratulations, class of 2023. <laughs> Thank you, Xavier, for that very kind uh, introduction, and you are absolutely right. Today's graduation is a special day for our company, and I am honored to be here. I'd also like to thank Congressman Bobby Scott for taking time out of his busy schedule to join us this morning. Graduates, <clears throat> as representatives of the Apprentice School, you play a critical role in our shipyard's future. You were chosen to complete this rigorous course, and you did. As a result of your hard work, when you walk across this stage in just moments, you will hold your heads high as leaders, future leaders of Newport News Shipbuilding. Like Xavier mentioned, being an apprentice is not for the faint of heart, and neither is being a leader. To do so, you have to take care of your people. You have to make them safe. You have to teach them. You have to coach them. You have to help them understand how important they are. You need to make tough decisions. You need to make sure that your team and you are being successful today while you're looking forward and preparing this business for a successful future, a future in which you will lead us. At Newport News, we're working hard to create a culture where everyone feels comfortable and safe to raise their hand if they're not sure what the next step is. We're trying to create a culture where everyone brings new and innovative ideas to the team. We're trying to create a culture where everyone understands how important their role is and the connection of their role to the greater mission. And as leaders, you will set the tone and you will pave the way for this culture and because of your leadership, this will thrive. I am so confident in you. And to accomplish this, I really have three asks of each of you. First is for you and your team to build clarity around what your role is and how your role fits in to the bigger responsibility of building these ships. Explain to each new employee and each seasoned employee as new tasks come along, how their role and their specific purpose helps make the overall company better. The second ask is that you help your team understand how you're doing, how the team is performing. Are we winning or are we losing? What help do we need? And what can we do within our control and our influence to make us more successful? And finally, I want your help in building that environment where every team member knows that if they have a question or they have an idea, 
It's up to us to listen to them, to stop the process, to make sure everyone is safe, and that we can do things right the first time. It's leadership that makes this happen. Culture is what you make it, and I am so confident that you all, as leaders today and leaders in the future, are going to help us do this. It's innovation that actually led to the apprentice school more than 100 years ago. And today, we continue to innovate with new classes and new programs, and even with new degrees. Adam Ryan West, one of the graduates here today, is the first in apprentice school history to receive a new associate's degree conferred by our school. He's earned an associate's in applied science in marine technology. And this is gonna strengthen our culture. And as, as we think about just a new degree from our school, think about all the innovations like this to come as we produce more incredible leaders for the future of this business for the next 100 years. So I want you all to hold your head high as you consider the impact that you are going to have. Our future depends on you. Thank you all very much. Today's keynote truly demonstrates the apprentice school pillar of leadership. A proud apprentice school graduate, she's gained extensive experience in aircraft carrier and submarine construction and maintenance throughout her career. Today, she serves as our Vice President of Fleet Support Programs and is a proud master shipbuilder. When you consider last month was Black History Month and this month is Women's History Month, it's only fitting that she is the first African-American woman graduate to become Newport News Shipbuilding Vice President. Just for clarity, she is the first woman graduate to become a Newport News Shipbuilding Vice President. Please give a warm welcome to our own history maker, Thomasina Wright. Definitely didn't anticipate that. I didn't hear Jennifer's remarks, but um, good morning. Good morning. Let me get get this done. So I do want to thank Jennifer for her kind remarks. You guys are an awesome crowd. Definitely want to thank you for being here today. And to the graduates, you should be proud of yourself and what you've accomplished. As Jennifer was introducing me, I was reflecting back on my own early, early days in the apprentice school and my own graduation. I remember meeting my husband for the first time because he was in the same department. He was, he, one of my first tasks as a mole loft apprentice was to build a wooden toolbox to hold my lofting tools. As a senior apprentice, Kenny had the responsibility to inspect my toolbox. <laughs> he made me turn this toolbox down, not just once, but twice, because it was out of square. He commented to me that we do things right around here the first time. And I remember saying to him, you're such a butthole. <laughs> At my on graduation, I remember sitting there thinking, I hope this speaker keeps it short and sweet. Now, over three decades later, I have the great honor to give the commencement speech for the class of 2023. When I was asked to give the commencement address at Virginia Peninsula Community College years ago, I spent countless hours writing a 15-minute speech. With today's technology, I said to myself, oh, this is Built, this will be easy. So I decided to use artificial intelligence to <laughs> generate my speech. I downloaded ChatGPT app, y'all know what that is, 
and I asked Ford to write a commencement address. In five minutes, it generated me a 35-page speech. <laughs> so let's get started. <laughs> Seriously, Dr. McCain rejected that speech, so I had to write my own. <laughs> Thanks, Dr. McCain. Several years ago, the Navy adopted a motto, get real, get better. This theme focused on understanding where you are, which is to get real, and improving on your situation to get better. So I want to use a similar theme today. Let's get started with get real. As we, as we look at the global climate and the civil unrest, the United States is involved in wars in Ukraine and Israel and we're providing safe passage for cargo ships along the Red Sea. Last fall, the Navy deployed two carrier strike groups, the USS Ford and the USS Eisenhower, to the eastern Mediterranean as the war in Israel started. As you know, China continues to be a threat. If you talk to any Navy leader, they will tell you China is preparing for war. Here at Newport News Shipbuilding, we're building and overhauling submarines and aircraft carriers to support our Navy. We're also, we also have a significant backlog of future work that will provide employment for future generations to come. Currently, we have about 25,000 employees and we'll be hiring another 20,000 people over the next 10 years to support this effort. These employees will need great leaders to train and coach them to become great shipbuilders. Here's the get real part. You have a huge opportunity to become one of those leaders because of your apprenticeship. This is exciting time to be a leader at Newport News Shipbuilding. As Jennifer mentioned, we're going through a leadership cultural transformation and this, you're in a sweet spot to be on the front end of this transformation journey. Where is Courtney Drexel? Courtney, please stand. <laughs> Courtney's, a, Courtney's a fourth generational shipbuilder. Her father still works at the shipyard along with her two brothers. She has recognized the opportunity to get real and has accepted a craft instructor position to lead and develop future apprentices. Thank you, Courtney, for your leadership. You may be seated. So now let's talk about how you can get better. I wanna share three areas of self-improvement. The first one is don't stop here. I recommend you to continue your education if you read my bio, you would see, in addition to my apprenticeship, I have an associate's, a bachelor's, and a master's degree. I remember my mom uh, saying, are you ever gonna stop going to school? Because I was in school for literally 10 years straight. As I mentor young professionals, I tell them that education is for self-enrichment first and career advancement second. You become a more informed person with different ideas and experiences and, and become a more competitive for future job offerings. The competition is tight for leadership positions and higher level degrees give you that competitive edge. Newport News Shipbuilding offers tuition reimbursement. That's how I use to pay for all of my degrees. Thank you, Jennifer. You're <laughs> <laughs> Today, online courses are offered in all major colleges and universities, so you don't have to leave work and go sit in the classroom for rest, the rest of the evening. The Apprentice School a Certificate offers transferable credits to most community colleges and four-year universities. And remember, learning doesn't stop with a degree. Learning is continuous. I'm still learning every day. In fact, when I tried my hand at the chat GPT app, my 19-year-old daughter had to walk me through that process. So see, old dogs can learn new tricks. 
My second get better piece of advice is to set goals and priorities. You have to balance your life between work, school, and family, and not in that particular order. My husband and I are both apprentice graduates and engineers, and we're very logical and methodical people. Some people even call us weird because we always have to have a logical plan. We have four daughters. Their names are in alphabetical order. <laughs> Ashley, Brianna, Christina, Danielle. This, this is crazy, right? <laughs> Our goals and priorities have shifted over the years. In the beginning, we focused on our education, then we established our careers, and then we started our family. Where's Melissa Westfall? Melissa? Hey, girl! Mel Melissa is a production planner and scheduler graduate. Melissa's my hero because she had three children doing her apprenticeship. Wait, it's not over, it's not over. With four kids under the age of six, she finished the salary optional program and completed her associate's degree. Melissa, you are a rock star. Thank you, thank you, thank you. A new trend for setting goals is called vision boards. This is a collage of images that represents goals and dreams. You can create one using poster boards and pictures or digitally on your computer or phone. My 21-year-old daughter created hers on her phone and she shared it with me. So I decided to de develop a 2024 board, but I went old school because I, I used poster boards and pictures. Even if you don't make a vision board, I encourage you to set short and long-term goals for your career and your family and drive yourself to achieve them. My last message for you to get better is to give back to your community. As Michelle Obama once said, you must bend down and let someone else stand on your shoulder so they can see a brighter future. This is so true. In the midst of juggling work and family, you need to set aside time to give back to your community. Whether it's through your church, civic or social organization, or even at work. Community service allows us to share experiences and enriches lives for the better. Newport News Shipbuilding offers numerous opportunities for their employees to volunteer. Some of you may participated with the apprentice school in the construction of the last Habitat for Humanity house. Also remember, if you can't commit your time, money is just as good. Since COVID, there's been a significant decline in individual donations to nonprofit organizations. My husband and I contribute to many nonprofit groups and to help our community. Five years ago, we established a family foundation to provide scholarship opportunities to Portsmouth High School students. So far, 12 students have benefited and furthered their education. Three of our first recipients are scheduled to uh, graduate this year. I encourage you to give your time and money to a great cause. Trust me, it makes all the difference in the world um, in your communities. At this time, I'd like to announce that my husband and I have established two $2,000 scholarships to support two members of this graduating class. This opportunity will help you further your education and you will receive more information about this in the future. In closing, I challenge you, class of 2023, to get real and get better. Newport News Shipbuilding is the best place to be to support our national defense and become a leader. Graduates, please focus on continuous learning, setting goals and priorities, 
and giving back to your community. Throughout my career, I have been the first African-American female at every level, leadership level. I started with being the first African-American female apprentice graduate to receive the Charles F. Bailey Award. And, and today, I'm the first African-American woman to give the commencement speech at the apprentice school. I told myself I wasn't going to do this, but this is a this is a full circle full circle moment for me. But I have one last shout out. <laughs> Can Lanisha Perry please stand? So, so Lanisha is also a first. She's the first female X thirty six apprentice graduate in the last nine years. Great job, Lanisha, for representing. I know hard, uh, how hard that department is. As the late Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor once said, it's nice to be the first, but I don't want to be the last. I want to thank you, Jennifer Boykin, Dr. McCain, the apprentice school staff, family, and friends for supporting this awesome class of 2023. And to the graduates, this is an exciting day for you. Enjoy it. You have a huge accomplishment. You've completed a huge accomplishment. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Jennifer and Thomasina, for your words have inspired all of us. I'm going to break script for a moment here. Um, Thomasina mentioned about being the first but not being the last. That's something that she lives every day with coaching, mentoring, supporting, and opening doors. Thomasina was my mentor. I'm honored to see her here, get her flowers while she's still at the company. Great job, Thomasina. And now the moment that you've all been waiting for. That, that's it? I hear it over here. All right. Our graduates will walk across the stage and ring the apprentice school bell, a true rite of passage. To lead this effort, I'd like to turn the program over to Dr. Letitia McCain, the apprentice school's director of education. Dr. McCain. Good morning. Congratulations to the class of 2023. Let's give them a round of applause. Graduates, before I call your names, please give your faculty and staff a round of applause for their commitment to training and academic excellence. As you stand row by row, turn your tassels from right to left to signify the completion of your apprenticeship. We will call the class in alphabetical order. Will the first row please stand and make your way to the stage. Thank you for that round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> Tashiana Quiche Adams.
Cody Andrew Allen. Ryan, Ryan Christopher Ayers. Jason Benjamin Bailey with high honors. To Shot Banks. Joy Nicole Barnes. James Michael Beasley with honors. Scotland Dean Bora. Samuel Cooper Brady. Anisha Tatiana Bruce with honors. Hunter Ray Bowles. James Andrew Burr. Stuart Preston Campbell. Brandon Dillard Carter with honors. Olivia Marie Katrin with high honors. Corey Southers Chambliss with high honors. Richard Clary. Brantley Michael Cole. Matthew Ellis Curtis with honors. William Larkin Davis the fourth. Alec Jordan Dutail with honors. Jayshawn Keith Douglas. Nathan Anthony Downs. Courtney Marie Driscoll with high honors. Dylan, Dylan Cole Dye. Destiny Nichelle Ellis with high honors. Joshua Bennett Farrow. Quef Demont Florine. Titus Sebastian Fox. Blake Nicole Gear with honors. Matthew Tyler Gravely. Veronica Marciana Hamilton with high honors. Nicholas, Nicholas Carl Hartman. Avon 
Hawkins. Brantley Edward Heron, the second, with honors. Adam Kai Hyatt. Josiah Hamilton Hill. Garrett Hodges. Brett Ryan Holland. Thomas Donald Hutchins with honors. Joseph Pasquale Imperielli with high honors. Austin Tyler Jackson. Jason Luke Jackson. Damon Lamar LaVar Jackson Jr. Marcel Marcellus Anthony Johns. Shedrick Johnson. Jamika Sheree Jones. Uh, JJ, I think you paid the audience, okay? Mm -hmm. Tyler Joseph Knapp. Travis Paul Knowlton with honors. Stephen David Muheyu Rico with honors. Shakara Monet Melvin. Elizabeth Merle. <laughs> Dylan Wayne Messick with honors. Jason Dalton, Jason Dalton Mitz with highest honors. Jeremiah Keith Morgan with honors. Caitlin, Caitlin Leanne Morris with honors. Daniel Joseph Murray with honors. Anthony Douglas Myers. Samantha Raven Nates. Con 
win with honors. Stephen Paul Nugent. David Clay O'Brien. Chelsea Megan Orn. Sharon Anthony Overby. Malik Palmer. <laughs> Nicholas Tyler Pasquin with honors. <laughs> Justin Caleb Paulson with honors. <laughs> Courtney Shea Payne Dunn with high honors. <laughs> Jeremiah Ledden Penny with honors. Gunther Volks Perkins with high honors. Chandler Javon Perry. Lanisha Nicole Perry. Christopher Michael Paulison with high honors. Cameron Joseph Ratloff. James Logan Reeser. Lawrence Sylvester Reed, Jr. Alexander Nicholas Sachs with honors. Danielle Shanique Seaborn. DeAndre Markle Seldom. Hunter Grant Seward. Jared Sinowitz with honors. Gavin Tyler Smith with honors.
Corey Khalil Spires. Phoenix O'Neill Sumner Jr. with high honors. Angela Rose Taylor with honors. Narian Muhammad Tuft Williams. Jared Darius Uzzel with honors. Micah Stevens Van Ness with honors. Tayshawn Malik Vinny. Kimberly Lachey Benson. James Wallace. <laughs> Melissa Ann Westfall with high honors. <laughs> Matthew Lee Wilbanks with honors. Grab. De Demarcus Jordan Woods. Come on, let's give it up for the class of twenty twenty three. And now, I would like Adam West to please join me here at the podium. On behalf of the State Council of Higher Education for Virginia, the Council on Occupational Education, and the faculty and staff of The Apprentice School, it is my honor to recognize Adam West as the first student in the Apprentice School history to receive an Associate of Applied Science degree in Maritime Technology. Now, let's give all of our graduates a round of applause, a standing ovation, a shout out. today's ceremony, it is our tradition to invite the Homer L. Ferguson Award recipient to address the graduates. This award is presented to the apprentice with the highest average in combined required academic and craft grades. Please join me in welcoming the class of 2023 Homer L. Ferguson Award winner, Scott Senowitz. Scott. 
<laughs> thank you, Dr. McCain, and thank you all. Once again, congratulations and kudos to all my fellow graduates. I'm truly humbled to be your class of 2023 Homer L. Ferguson recipient. When I began my apprenticeship, I never imagined I would be standing here four years later. After all, my path was unlike most others, who either started straight out of high school or transferred in. To be honest, I was intimidated, and yet I admired all of you. Here I was, surrounded by countless individuals who had gotten a jump start on their shipbuilding careers, and then there was me, a 28-year-old who could barely use a socket wrench. I came to the shipyard after seven years as a pharmacy technician, so I had a lot to learn. It should go without saying, there were innumerable times where I felt completely overwhelmed and unschooled for the task at hand. But as daunting as it was, each day got a little bit easier, especially with the guidance of some awesome foremen and mechanics. And those small steps that initially seemed insignificant became the foundation for the confidence I needed to thrive. I bring this up as a reminder to all of you. Often I think we focus on the things out of our control and underestimate the importance of the things we can. No one can argue that knowledge and craftsmanship are essential to producing the most advanced sea vessels in the world here at Newport News Shipbuilding. But those skills take time to develop and even longer to refine. So while we continue to improve ourselves, I can't emphasize enough the importance of a strong work ethic, good attitude, desire to learn, and preparedness. The law of equivalent exchange states that you must be willing to give something of value if you expect to receive something of equal worth in return. In simple terms, show your peers that you respect their time and expertise by always putting in an earnest effort. Balance. Balance is the key. You want to keep challenging yourself by stepping outside of your bubble. The initial discomfort will quickly fade as you forge your best self. And as you grow, be confident in your worth and celebrate your achievements. But always know, they do not completely define you. Your character will always be the most important quality people will judge. Focus on being the person others want to work with and the one that everyone turns to for help. The smallest words or actions really can make all the difference and are part of what got me here today. Because ultimately, the greatest achievement is not to be superior to everyone else, but to be the best version of ourselves, and especially to elevate those around us. So lastly, as you progress forward on your own journeys, please remember that there are many more just embarking on theirs. Regardless of the degrees, awards, and titles you obtain, stay grounded and choose to facilitate others' growth, not to hinder them. Never forget your roots and where you came from. With one another's support, we create the culture Newport News Shipbuilding deserves. Thank you all. Thank you, Scott. Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, let's give Scott another round of applause. Before we close, I'd like to recognize the support system that helped our graduates, the parents, grandparents, spouses, significant others, and children of our graduating class. Your love helped shape these shipbuilders. So you pl will you please stand and be recognized? All right, with, with all the cheers that I heard, there's a lot of support here. Let's recognize them. Thank you. Graduates, congratulations again on this incredible achievement. Your role in our company and in the defense of our nation cannot be understated. Thank you for your dedication, and I can't wait to see what the future holds. I now ask that everyone please stand 
and remain standing for the faculty and staff and graduates recessional. Once the last graduate has left the sanctuary, you are welcome to join us for light refreshments in the dining hall. Please enjoy the rest of your day.